Hey everyone, Ryan here, MNR Productions, and today we're taking a look at what might be one of the most overpriced LEGO Star Wars sets ever released from the summer of 2010. We have the 8128 Cad Bane Speeder. It had 318 pieces, five minifigs, and in the US, when released, was a Target exclusive for $50. Very expensive and adjusted for inflation in today's money. It's about $65, and if you want a sealed one of these, you can buy it on eBay for somewhere around $150 nowadays this thing is pricey and it's very lightweight one of the things about this set when i got it uh way way back in the day is just it, it's such a big box for something that doesn't feel like it needs a big box and lego's done a good job in recent years of downsizing their boxes relative to the cost of things but this was a massive box for a 50 dollars set or for a set that felt like it should be 30 dollars. i mean it's just not very heavy there's not a lot there uh, obviously i think the minifigures were a big draw here though with cad bane shahan alma the senate commando the senate commando cap and the assassin droid like it's actually a good figure selection we'll take a good look at those but we've got Coruscant in the background on the box art it looks very good with that classic 2010 Captain Rex one of the greatest box arts to ever be on Lego Star Wars sets and then on the back of the box we just have a separate angle of Cad Bane speeder it shows off a couple of the features one of which might be the best flick fire missile feature they've ever included on a set like I said, there's just not a lot in here. And in fact, there's so few pieces, they didn't even bother to use numbered bags. That's actually pretty crazy for a $50 set. Here's our sticker sheet and a little nostalgia for you in the back of the instruction manual with a bunch of other summer 2010 sets. Beautiful. I love the Lego Cad Bane minifigure. It's such a great classic Clone Wars look and they even made a piece for his breathing tubes, which is pretty surprising that they didn't just print them on. This is some extra work that they put into a Clone Wars minifigure. Don't see that too often often nowadays but look it's fantastic I shouldn't talk down on them for that I mean it's really really good love his red eyes I think they beam out from under the brim of his hat looks really good there with this kind of cowboy hat very expansive hat though covers a lot if you take that off he looks pretty funny without the hat to be honest and you know maybe not the greatest look but yeah with the hat on there very cool looking figure and he's dual wielding regular lego blasters which looks a bit odd I've never been a fan of dual wielding this size of blaster but I think it works for Cad Bane if it's going to work for anybody then as one of the pirate minifigures we have shahan alama who looks amazing he's got a gold arm and a blue arm very nice prints all around and he doesn't have a second facial expression however he does have a print on the back of his head which is a very nice additional detail which really didn't need to be there because it's covered up by this piece most of the time but man it's it's nice to see them go the extra mile sometimes in a case like that it's just a little bit of extra detail you do see it a little bit there but it's just not you know super easy to see when the cad bane speeder came out the only way to get Senate Commandos was the Venator from 2009, and that was 120 bucks, so at just $50, this was a pretty cheap way to get a Senate Commando, and actually a Senate Commando Captain, as we'll see in a moment, but these things looked amazing at the time. It was before they came out in the Battle Pack, and it kind of ruined how cool they were to me. Uh, I think they came out in the Battle Pack in 2015, but they come with the long rifle, and underneath they have the regular Clone Wars face, which is just such a classic to me. I'll always love it with the big googly eyes or whatever, but yeah, this guy looks amazing and then we have the senate commando captain who basically has the same armor design and they just added some white lines and white markings in a bunch of different places to make him look accurate to what he looks like in the clone war show he's also got a long rifle and the same clone war style clone head underneath the helmet the fifth and final figure in the set is an assassin droid it's definitely not one that's going to excite a lot of people but it's still great to have in the set with the long rifle there makes a lot of sense to have here it's just not the coolest minifigure for a $50 set at the time the Cad Bane speeder is underwhelming it's a bit of a small build to say the least and like I said earlier the box just doesn't feel like it has $50 worth of stuff in it and I definitely still feel that way like if this was 60 bucks today with inflation or whatever it would still definitely feel not worth it even with some decent minifigs it's not like any of these had anything at the time that was like super exclusive or rare. like even Cad Bane's breathing tubes came in a couple sets at least like it's not like that was going to be a super expensive part of this set so it's weird to me that this one was so expensive it still doesn't make a ton of sense poor pricing aside it is still a beautiful build a very elegant Clone Wars build 
really happy with the way that it came out. The color scheme is great. The stickers add a lot, and there's a surprising amount of stickers that we saw on that sticker sheet, but like I said, I think they do add a bit for this set. There's a few headlights at the front with the translucent blue color, one of which is fixed in place, and the other two are actually kind of hidden flick fire missiles. It's not particularly easy to tell that that's what they are, but when you realize that this at the back is a knob that you're supposed to push, which then pushes the flick fire missile out the front, you understand the concept. It's one of my favorite flick fire missile integrations ever on a LEGO Star Wars set. You just push and it fires all the way off and onto the ground. It's very well done. Reloading is as easy as it gets as you just push it right back into place. Um, but it does look weird. If you lose one, it's not going to look very good, so keep that in mind. You don't want to lose those particular pieces, but I really like that it both looks good and is functional, which is not always the case with flick fire missiles. Sometimes they sacrifice looks for those. I really like these pieces here, which kind of act as a grip for the Cad Bane speeder. I always liked holding it like this at the bottom, kind of like you're throwing a dart or something with this particular build. Just a really nice area to hold on to it at the bottom. You can see just dark blue stacked with tan, a little more dark blue mixed in, some grill pieces to add some texture to it it generally looks very good and you can see the bottom side here not particularly greatly detailed but it has enough contouring to look good and not look too blocky now moving completely to the top side of the speeder you can see it's also contoured very well definitely better than the bottom very smooth look to it not a lot of studs shown on the top which is a awesome look you can see some of the sticker detailing and then of course the cockpit area where you do have a control panel that's printed we've got a blue stud in the middle and a steering wheel Steering wheel always feeling a bit out of place in Star Wars as they typically don't use straight up wheels. They use some kind of fancy column shape and I wish Lego did have something to represent that better. That's maybe one of the few flaws of something like this. And then on the other side, we can take Shahan Alama. Just like that, you've got Cad Bane and his pirate buddy going for a ride there. I think it ends up looking very nice and they fit in just perfectly there. This is sized perfectly for those figs. And then we've got four more seats in the back. And unfortunately we don't have all the characters that you might want for that, but you can take your assassin droid and sit him here. The problem is assassin droids don't fit perfectly in lego seats like that so this guy is bound to fly around there's no real way for him to actually sit there but you can take a rifle of his and place it in the holder there that's kind of nice it, it's a really nice passenger area i think it looks beautiful it's just very unfortunate that he can't sit there but he does benefit from being able to stand on the side and if we're coming up alongside the republic commandos on coruscant well then they can have their fight and shoot at each other, which is great. I think that works very nicely. I don't think that the seating idea works very nicely. Now, obviously, Cad Bane and Mr. Alama are missing their weapons, and that's because you can actually take them, and there's a entire storage area in the back of the speeder here, so you can lift up from this back fin like so, and you can see very large storage area where you can fit plenty of weaponry or treasures or whatever you want to end up taking away from your heist if you want to do a heist with this. It's pretty cool what you can do with this. Uh, as far as storage in the back and very flat area here without this thing pushed down but you can store multiple weapons back there at least for now and we can close that up and you shouldn't have to worry too much about it uh, flipping over as there are studs that are going to hold it together for you there but when you want to pull it open you can pull it open and get access to that and then finally we have the engines at the back which look very good with their stickers that add the detail there if you do end up picking one of these up though I would caution you to be very careful lining up the stickers on this set it's just just one of those sets where I think it's very important to have really good sticker placement and a steady hand to help you make everything look as good as it can possibly look because the set really benefits from something like that. And then you can see the back with the thrust coming out with the blue. Very, very nice look. And I do find it a bit annoying with the weapons in there. You can hear them. They rattle quite a bit. For $150 in today's market, new in box, it's hard to recommend this set. Even back in the day, $50 was widely regarded as super overpriced for this thing so paying more for it now seems even crazier but if you've got the money and you've got the nostalgia or you're just a completionist collector it'll be worth the money it's a cool one it's definitely one that i would love to keep on my display in the background there i just think it's a pretty unique looking ship with the separatist colors not a lot of things not to like about it other than the price at its time of release and the price it costs now i did always think it would have been cool to have an attachment on this set for zero the hut where they had 
them in tow. I thought that was pretty cool with the Cad Bane speeder. Definitely could have used that as like an additional set or part of this set. It definitely would have made it worth the money at that point. And, you know, definitely additional Clone Wars figures make sense to add to this set as well. Commando droids were seen in this. So there's definitely some missing minifigures from that point of view. I also think a little build of a Coruscant platform would have added quite a bit as well as that's what's shown on the box art for the Republic Commandos, but they don't actually have anything to stand on when the set is finished and built. It's just part of the art to sell you on the set. So kind of a shame there that there's nothing really for these guys to do other than stand on the ground, but really a cool set. I'm curious what everyone thinks. Let me know in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, leave a like if you enjoy, and you can check out more 2010 and Lego Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.